Hello everyone and welcome to my little look at the Star Wars Battlefront 2 multiplayer beta that was held this past weekend. Uh, obviously this beta does not have all of the modes, especially not the single player campaign. All that will be released in November. Right now we have this Galactic Assault mode, Starfighter Assault, the Strike mode, and an Arcade mode. Uh, I'll be looking at the Gal Galactic Assault first. Though I'm not really good at ground pounding, frankly. I'm more of an air fightery, spacey kind of person. I'm not much of a grunt, frankly. Uh, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it. I'm not the right person to review how this goes. Uh, it reminded me a lot of Overwatch, which is sort of the game closest to this that I've played. I haven't played too many uh, of these kinds of battle arena kind of things. But yeah, um... Here I am as a clone fighting droids. You don't get, you didn't get to pick your side during this. We basically alternate sides uh, from one round to another. And so here I am. It looks great. You can see it looks great. It uh, is a stunning environment to go around in. And I'm gonna die. There we go. So unceremoniously killed by a droid very quickly. And I don't get too much better after that. Possibly after much, much gameplay, I'll finally get the hang of this. But not for now. So, yeah. Here as a droid, I actually, for some reason, am more comfortable playing a droid. I don't know why. I, I feel like I'm more, more inclined to be a droid. But here I am. And I'm probably gonna die soon. I don't last very long. Uh, many, many rebirths as a droid. Uh, there we go. Alright. Well, yeah. Again, I'm not the right person to talk about that. What I am more interested in is the whole space combat thing. And here, again, it randomly selects which side you're on, and I am a TIE fighter this time. You can select whether to be a fighter, um, an interceptor, or a bomber. And as far as playing the M Imperial side, I do like the TIE fighter. I generally like being more maneuverable. Not necessarily faster, but more maneuverable. Whether it's the Imperial side or the Rebel side, I could not get into the bombers at all. Um, Obviously, they're very important to the missions. There are mission-specific goals that the bombers can really help out with. I just couldn't get a feel for them. As far as the controls are concerned, um, you, it sort of read my joystick, but I couldn't use it. The joystick just didn't feel right. It, it didn't do what joysticks normally do, basically. And the joystick throttle wasn't configurable. It doesn't have a configuration for the joystick. It has a gamepad configuration. So you can use the gamepad with it, but otherwise, uh, to control it, practically speaking, for me it was just keyboard and mouse, mouse to turn. So I, uh, you know, in the forward two-dimensional plane, so up, down, side to side, and then W A, uh, I mean W and S forward and uh, well faster and slower. It doesn't, you, you can't go backwards. You can't really slow down uh, too much. There's a minimum speed. Okay, that was pretty good, 820. Really, the goal for me in this was to try and get to one of the special ships, just to see how they were. In this case, that was mainly a Slave 1, Boba Fett ship. Anyway, as I was saying, the ships can't uh, stop to a standstill. They always have some forward thrust going, but they can go a little bit faster, and the uh, TIE Fighter has an afterburner. Q and E are roll, so you can use them to roll around, otherwise it's just uh, sort of a yaw and a pitch. The yaw and pitch being controlled by the mouse. It was it, it was easy to get used to pretty quickly, though, you know, just as sort of a um, space combat snob, I like to use my joystick. The only real sense of inertia here is that you really can't come to a standstill. The combat is, as you would expect from Star Wars, it feels like you're in an atmosphere, more or less. Um, so, just like an aircraft can't just stop in midair unless you're a Harrier or, you know, 
With with the exception of VTOLs, they just continue moving forward and either go faster or slower. Same with this sort of combat. Otherwise, except for some connection jitters that might have been a problem on my end, it was fairly fluid. And you can see very responsive. The bomber here, this is the bomber. We do have very concrete goals, protect the shield projectors, and then the rebels are attacking the shield projectors. It's very clear. It's worth pointing out that for this multiplayer beta, we only had one galactic assault map and one of these space maps, which I guess is reasonable because it meant that it was quicker to get the games because everybody was on the same map. But otherwise, if you had a lot of maps, then all the people playing the beta would have been divided among those maps and it might be a, diff uh, a little bit more difficult to get a game together, just marginally. I'm sure there are plenty of people playing. Anyway, there I am trying to attack a Millennium Falcon. That has a lot of uh, shielding, or whatever you want to call it. it. It takes a lot to take one of those down. So that's nice. I mean, eventually by the end of this video I get to fly one. Oh! Uh, bad flying on my part there. Actually, smacking into things is oddly satisfying. Um, the the cinematic effect there, when you smack into something, is is probably the best I've ever seen as far as stuff smacking into things. I don't know if that's bonus points for the game, but... Actually, when you think about the Star Wars movies, there are some memorable scenes with uh, spacecraft smacking into things and it being quite, quite spectacular. But anyway, uh, here we continue. Again, trying to unlock Slave 1 was basically my goal here, so that I could at least try it out. And still not enough points. I need 2,500 there, see? So, once again with TIE Fighter, I keep playing it because I feel like this is the one I do best in. I haven't really mastered the whole using missiles thing, though missiles are a pain to evade. I have managed to evade a few, finally. But it takes some practice. I'm still not entirely clear about the rules of evading missiles. Ow. Okay, now I have 2,500 points. But unfortunately somebody else is already flying Slave 1. And I think only one instance of it is allowed. Incidentally, I'm cutting out some of the quicker deaths. Uh, that's just to keep the video short. A little bit of internet jitters there. Anyway, very satisfying environment to fly in. And I'm not I'm not doing some of the more fancy maneuvering I could do with all the structure present. You know, there are tunnels to go into and you can do some pretty fancy flying. But most of my opponents are right out here, so I continue ow 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 ow. Oh, this, this Hope guy, I think, uh, got the best points in the game. Uh, still somebody else playing Slave 1. Maybe I can get the 3,500 points necessary for the other special ship? I'm just gonna call them special ships. I don't know what you wanna call them. I did not watch any tutorials about this beforehand. It is a beta, after all. So I just plunged in and tried my best. I'm sure there are already people making tutorials about how to use the various weapons and fighters and all that. Personally, I was just interested in, is it fun? And it was fun. Um, not really the control scheme I would like. Oh, we were victorious, but unfortunately I did not get to achieve my own goal of trying out one of those ships. Alas. Well, as recompense, this is the next time I played the Imperial side, and this time I did get to play Slave 1, and so I'm about to make enough points for that. Um, let's see. It looks like I'm being chased and about to get fragged, maybe? Backing up battle points, though. Uh, oh, I got him before they got me. But yep, that's just barely 2,500. 2,506, and I quickly jump to it before somebody else can get it. 
So this is the very first time I was trying this ship, and I had no idea how to fly it. I didn't know whether it was more of a um, tanky sort of ship. Uh, I was bemused by the gun sound. Um, let's hear that again. Yeah, I, I didn't know whether sounding like that, if it was going to do any serious damage. And I was having trouble trying to kill that guy. Meanwhile, everybody started shooting at me. I mean, like, I, I was taking a lot of damage very quick. And missile. Hold it steady. Well, that ended my excursion. My only excursion so far in that particular ship. Here we are with the Rebel side, which I prefer to play anyway. I, I actually, out of all the ships, I am most comfortable with the TIE Fighter, honestly. Um, X-Wing probably second. And, no, no, uh, the A-Wing second and then X-Wing third. So, actually, I'm not as comfortable with the X-Wing as I am with the A-Wing. Because the A-Wing is a little bit more maneuverable, fast, it feels faster. And I sort of like that. There are AI ships in the mix, and you saw one right there. Oh, darn it. I feel like the X-Wing is sort of a big target somehow. Anyway, I play an A-Wing next. I just like these little guys. Look at it, it looks so agile. Uh, it takes a lot more shots to bring down an enemy, but still, it seems to take fewer than Slave 1 did. Yep. Yeah, uh, doing a quick work there. You get extra points for, like, Avenger and stuff like that. I think if you uh, kill somebody that just recently killed you, you get extra points. So that's nice. Vengeance. In total, I played the multiplayer beta for about 4 or 5 hours, and even though we didn't have many maps to play with, it was, it was reasonably fun still. Uh, each time was a little bit different. I didn't really get used to all the ships yet, obviously. Um, still a lot to learn about the flight mechanics and also, as far as ground assault goes, how how to actually survive in that sort of situation. Just not very good at that. But uh, yeah, so it was reasonably fun even though we didn't have a lot of environments to play around in. On the whole though, as far as this game is concerned, I'm mostly looking forward to the single player campaign. I think the main character in that is compelling. I want to see what they do with that storyline. I hope they do something interesting and it isn't too lame. Who knows? They got a good character, uh, it's a matter of plot now. This, this thing is really nifty, I just like the fact that it's so nimble. And it's got the afterburners as well. Instead of afterburners, the X-Wing has uh, uh, droid repair. So your R2-D2 unit will repair you. I think I'm close to death here. The trouble with a small little guy like this is, of course, it doesn't take too many shots to kill me. Yeah. 1,500 there. Getting to try out the Millennium Falcon takes 2,500 battle points, and that's what I'm aiming for. I had to hope that my team wouldn't win or lose before I rack up enough battle points. Um, but I was steadily getting better at playing these ships. Uh, I think uh, eventually it won't be such a struggle to get enough battle points. More of a struggle will be learning how to play those special ships properly, because once you get them, you play them so rarely, or at least relatively rarely compared to the other ships, that uh, it's harder to get a feel for them. There, I suppose, watching the tutorial videos might be helpful. Okay, well... Alright, alright. We have the Millennium Falcon, Hans Falcon specifically. And we will see how that goes. First try with this. Again, it seems like its job is to be tanky. It has a lot of hit points. Uh, more than Slave 1, I think. 
Though still I hope that uh, everybody won't suddenly decide to shoot at me. That's just never fun. Okay, well I'm getting some glancing blows here, but uh, I'll, I can safely ignore them for now. I'm not focusing on the reactor though, and I, I come to regret this. I probably should have. But I was just trying to get a feel for it. And the best way to get a feel for a new ship is to shoot other things with it. I mean, as long as you're not in like X-Plane or Flight Sim. Each ship has its own feel, and I don't know whether they match exactly how they're supposed to be as far as Star Wars lore. Though, I think this is a reasonable way for the Millennium Falcon to react uh, compared to the other ships. And certainly the A-Wings seem like they ought to be the way they are. Needless to say, I'm not gonna bother judging anything in this game based on, like, realism. Let's just... let's just ignore that whole thing. Thankfully, it gives us ample reason to do so. It just looks beautiful and that distracts me well enough. And unfortunately... That marks our defeat in that round, and I was just not paying attention to the objectives there. So that's a little bit sad. If you get a special ship, you'd better use it properly, and I don't think I did it right there. Anyway, so uh, that was my experience in a nutshell with Star Wars Battlefront 2 Multiplayer Beta. Lots more to see as far as this game is concerned uh, coming up in a month. But uh, yeah, so far fun anyway. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.